So let me ask, did you like the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's their fault. <laughs> yeah, you guys should be pretty proud. I want to ask you, is it because both of you are Sacramento natives and live there that kind of made this a very special piece for you? And Colin, I'll start, and Sean, you jump into well, it. Well, it definitely was, uh, was part of it, for sure. You know, coming from Sacramento, uh, Tower was always a, a massive point of, of civic pride. You know, we spent a lot of our time growing up, uh, uh, going through the aisles at, at Tower, uh, killing time at Tower. So that definitely was, was part of it for us. And I think in a strange way also, maybe gave us a little bit of a, an inside advantage because we could relate to everyone that worked at Tower. You know, when Steve Nichols says he's sitting at a, you know, expat bar in Taipei at two in the morning and he goes, what am I doing here? I'm from Sacramento. We can kind of relate to that, so, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Anything to add to that, Sean? Uh, you know, I think you nailed it. It's, it's, it this was a, a company that was near and dear to our hearts. There wasn't a lot that, that comes out of the, our hometown. Um, and when uh, when we heard kind of the the that ignition point for us, which was it started in that drugstore in the 1940s and, and one shelf of a pharmacy, grew to a billion dollar corporation with five years with bankrupt. Uh, Colin's like, I think there's a story here we should explore. Yeah. And I think within 10 minutes of sitting down with Russ, we were slack job wide eyed and realized we found an incredible character for a documentary and uh, an incredible group around him and, and knew we needed to explore it. So Russ, let me ask you, who first approached you? And, and were you reluctant or were you on board right away? That's, yeah, this is a pretty good story. My first approach was my dentist. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the level. Apparently my dentist had, knew of, had a friend that was their friend and they, he said he came It always goes back to the dentist, let's right? Make, <laughs> let, they, these guys want to make a movie. And naturally I said, you're nuts. I mean, that's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But, but they persevered, I must say. And after you went through it and you started answering the questions and kind of remembering all those uh, great stories, did it ever make you think, wow, really, there's really, this has been pretty amazing. Did you really feel like maybe you changed culture just a little bit? Uh, well, I felt it was fun to make. That's yeah. the big deal. I mean, it was really fun. They kept coming up and asking me questions over and over. And I had to make up answers. <laughs> Different ones each time. We fact check nothing. No, 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 no. So guys, I was thinking as I watched this, I love I love movies about business. I'm in business and I have a I, I do marketing and when I watched the film I thought and maybe some of you guys felt this way too, this should be required viewing for business schools. Because when you really watch this film, you see you see the, the rise, the rapid rise, the huge growth, the expansion, the team, the Bob, the importance of a great chief finance officer, like you see all the different things that went into it and then ultimately the bankruptcy. But when you see this, boy, as you're watching it, you it is a true case study in business today. Anyway, if they showed this at Harvard Business School, they'd be cutting their throats. <laughs> yeah, it's it not the way that business is supposed to be run, I don't think. It, it was interesting for us, and I think we, you know, we, I, I refer to it as, you know, life imitating art a little bit. We, we would spend time with Russ, and a lot of what we gleaned from him came after hours. We would put the cameras down and um, we wouldn't drink because Russ doesn't drink at all. You know? um, we would sit at the bar with Russ and we would talk about life and he'd tell us all the other stories, all the other stuff that didn't make sense for the documentary. Uh, and you know, I think we, we gleaned a lot, you know, he surrounded himself with people that were great at what they did and gave them the opportunity to do their job uh, and really excel and strive and fail and, and win. Um, and I think for us as filmmakers, we want to surround ourselves with the best possible people whether that's cinematographers or editors or other producers. And, you know, watching Russ and how he did what he did, we really tried to, I think, you know, throughout our process, do the same. And we learned a lot from, from just being around him. Um, and, you know, ultimately got more out of it than just making a documentary, but learned life lessons from wow. him, which was really I exciting. Because well, they were pretty racy stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were racy, but when you think about it, and what Sean was saying, you, it didn't matter if their hair was long, it didn't matter if they had experience, if they were good at their job and they bought into the, the premise and they were excelled at what they did, then it worked. And that's what you guys do on the set and that's what you did certainly in the in all right. your stores. Yeah. It was the people. That's what makes it work. 
You know, I read a, um, there's a little business book about Starbucks and the history of Starbucks. You may not see the similarities, but Starbucks followed your lead. Their stores were built on their baristas having their own personalities and creating their own vibe, and it became a little bit of a micro community, which is what you kind of started. Think about that, you know, it was a record store, those don't exist, and now it's a place where people congregate. That's true, except you gotta buy something first and then you can hang out at Tower, you could hang out and never buy anything. Oh, that's true. Hey, that's a good point. You know, I'll tell you, to, to mention Spark Starbucks, I never thought of them overall following our way, but they did along the way, bought a couple of record stores called Hear Music up in, uh, well, in Berkeley and, and one other place. Seattle, I think. And then they got into the record business and had a couple of really successful records. Ray Charles. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, James Ward, well. Ray Charles. That's right. Like that. Interesting that you should bring that up. I never thought of it. Um, what'd you do with all your records? You must have had a ton of freebies. I got to know where's your record collection? I got records that are crawling all over the place. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to show you something that I brought in honor of you. You know, this is my record. <clears throat> And this, I don't even have a turntable. But you know what's interesting? I can't let this go. I can't let my record collection go because for those of us of a certain age, this is what defined us. What you owned, right? Your records. So that's why I asked if this was an all time great. Oh. Now, do you notice that I wrote my name on it so my crappy sister <laughs> wouldn't steal it? This was always, didn't you know uh, guys used to do this too? But the reason why I brought it was to show you, I think, and as depicted so lovely in the film, is records really meant something. I mean, they certainly reflected the times. And I was listening to an interview recently of David Crosby and people, he mentioned people would stand in line. And I was always amazed, every store you opened, there was a line. People were drawn to it. 